Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. You know what I mean? That's the reality. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. We need to start talking to people who are genuinely impacted by this. If we, yes. if we want to change the narrative, which is why I appreciate you asking me to come on. And you know we had a bit of a back and forth. I'm like, nah, yeah. I don't want to. But then you're right. Alhamdulillah, you're right. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Um, Tijani, I want to show you a small video clip. Okay. Right? And I want you to comment on this video clip, inshallah, okay? Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. Um, this is Dr. Qali Hussain. I um, want to talk to um, specifically the Somali community um, about a couple of things. Um, I so I've been, you know, texting or messaging um, on social media a lot about the um, the Black Lives Matters movement. Um, as well as the coronavirus before um, before uh, Memorial Day and the uh, death of uh, George Floyd. So, um, you know, we have a lot of, you know, the racism that we're talking about right now, it is persistent in the healthcare field. And um, the fact that the mortality of coronavirus um, among Somalis and among African Americans um, minorities is is pretty significant, um, and that's one of the reasons why. So I recently received a call from um, many people actually, as far as the treatment of um, patients who are black, who are Somali, who are minorities um, uh, in the hospital. And one of the things that I've seen is that there is quick. Um, um, there's a recommendation uh, for them to opt out of treatment. There is an, uh, there's a, uh, an option for them to say, you know what, um, because you have all these medical problems and because you're African-American and it's used as a risk factor for you not doing well, um, that treatment is withheld, okay? So, and they uh, usually say, um, you know, do not intubate, do not resuscitate, which means if you know they stop breathing on their own don't put a tube down and if they if their heart stops don't restart it don't do anything so i wanted to do a little bit of community education on what that is okay so when you go to the hospital you're given an option of code status okay the code status is um, if anything bad were to happen, if your heart stopped, if you stopped breathing, um, if your blood pressure dropped, you know, significantly, what would you want us to do? Okay. And so the options are full code. Okay. Full code. That's do everything. Give medications, um, you know, put a tube down if they need it. Um, give them blood if they're bleeding to death. Basically do everything you can possible to treat uh, you know, whatever the underlying cause to give that person the best chance of survival. Okay. So that is full code. The other extreme, the other end is DNR. Okay. Do not resuscitate. If you hear DNR, it means do not resuscitate. And what that means is don't do anything. If their heart stops, don't do anything. If, uh, you know, they stop breathing, don't, don't do anything. Don't put a tube down. Don't give them any breathing treatment. It means don't do anything. Let the person die. Okay. That's what that means. There's another form called DNI. Okay. That's do not intubate. Okay. DNI means do not intubate. And what that means is if you, um, stop breathing and you have a hard time breathing, and that's the main problem with, with coronavirus is, you know, your lungs are, um, are infected and you have a hard time breathing, your oxygen drops, right? Intubation, putting that tube down is the best treatment we have right now, okay? It's supportive care. But DNI, giving that option to, you know, African Americans, black, minorities, um, anybody who has a language barrier, um, giving that as an option to say they're gonna do bad anyway, DNI, that is a health disparity. That is why more, more of us are dying from this disease because we're being presented with the option to not do anything, okay? So DNI means do not intubate, means don't do anything, okay? So from full code 
to DNR DNI. Okay, the first option you're going to be given is DNR DNI. I've seen this firsthand, so there's really not going to be you know any convincing of uh, um, that needs to be done. So what I want you guys to do is educate your community, your family, your friends about these options. Okay, when you go to the hospital, unless the person has end stage terminal disease, they're going to hospice and they're, you know, they're dying and you don't want to prolong their suffering. Um, if it's a young, healthy patient, young, healthy patient who has a good chance of survival with the, with the treatments that we have, full code is what you want. Okay, full code. Okay, you want intubation, you want a tube. Intubation basically means a tube down your throat to help support your lungs. Okay, so full code. Do not intubate is only if, you know, you have no other option and this person is terminal, okay? Do not intubate means don't put a tube down and do not resuscitate means if their heart stops, do not resuscitate it. If their heart stops, I mean, we have patients who have coded, whose heart stopped, uh, that, you know, that have m multiple medical problems. I, res I think I restarted a guy whose heart stopped um, right on the floor and you know we did the CPR and everything on the floor um, within four days he was out of the hospital right so the you know the survival rate in, in, inside hospital is much better than than survival rate you know if you have a heart attack or your heart stops outside of the hospital we already know that but if you want everything done for your family especially if they're young and healthy and were completely um, um, stable before they went to the hospital you want full code DNR, DNI, if they present you with that option, tell them, explain, why do you want them to be DNR, DNI? What is your reason? And if they use, oh, they're African-American as an excuse, that is a healthcare disparity. That is a bias, okay? So um, if you have any questions, please leave it uh, below and I will try to answer it as much as I can. But this is an important, you know, important teaching point um, that I keep seeing over and over and over, okay? We need to know the language so that we can make good choices for our family members. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. So what do you think about that, Sheikh? <laughs> oh, subhanAllah. I can't. Is 110% a true percentage? I 110% agree with the sister. Mm. I think she outlined a few key things that I, that I would also like to um, highlight. Mm. Essentially, what is that? What seemed to be at the core of the issue is health literacy mm. meaning we unfortunately as a community do not know enough about health and the healthcare system and how it functions and we have a bunch of people going around spreading all these false information and we're, we're we just seem to be the ones that gobble it up the most mm. and they know that given our history and what happened to us in the past we're more likely to, to listen. Yes. That's just the reality. Right. Okay. So we're more susceptible to a lot of these false information because of what, because of our history. Because of our history. Actually, people, actually, this is a major part of our history. We've always been fed misinformation. Always. And so at one point, at some point, we're all, we're all going to both individually, as a family, as a community, start saying enough is enough. Yes. We're not going to, we're not going to listen to individuals who don't have our best interests at, at heart. heart. Exactly. We, we gotta stop exactly. doing this. Exactly. That's my we got thing. To stop doing this. Why, why are we listening to outsiders? We have individuals who are working with you in the trenches. Thank who you, you can see their blood, sweat, and tears yes. with your community back mm. to back. Mm. I mean, when we study our, 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 our Islamic history, that's what we found. Mm. The Prophet wasn't chilling and, the, and, and his masjid is being built. Mm. The companions had to say to him, Ya Rasulullah, I mean, you know, you got to relax. And he's like, what are you talking about? Yep. In the trenches. He's so literally, can... literally, the Prophet Sallallahu was literally in the trenches. When I say literally, I mean, he was literally yes. digging the trenches yes. himself. Right? But... And this is, this is the approach that we have to have. We have to talk to our own people, the people who are there, who have our best interests at heart. You know? I'm sorry, Dr. Rashad Buttar, he's not one of us, and he's not a frontliner. And, and I don't understand why we listen to somebody like that. And he's not in the trenches. This is not, this is not an attack on somebody's qualification. Mm -hmm. Even myself, if I make an error, if I say something that's not true, mm -hmm. 
I would want persons to say to me, hey, no, what you said is not true. And it has nothing to do with a personal attack. Mm -hmm. We have to get away from personality worship. Yes. You got to deal with these per somebody who's in the trenches with you mm -hmm. and is suffering with you mm -hmm. and is giving you advice. You got to start at some point, start saying, why am, why am I listening to somebody else? Thank not, you. Thank you. Who's not, who's not with me on this, on this journey. Like it's just, it's, it's, un it's, it's unfair mm -hmm. and it's not, it's doing a disservice. And if you look at what the sister was able to. Slaanik guys. So unfortunately, that is the end of the video with Dr. Suleiman Tijani. I had lost internet connection and I was not able to finish that interview. So I know it's a little bit anticlimactic, but as soon as I get a chance to interview the doctor as well, I will post it for you guys. Now, as most of you know, or you may know, you may not know, but uh, my YouTube channel was sabotaged and that's why I'm not able to put these videos on YouTube. So it was sabotaged by Nasser Hanbali. And you know the content that I'm putting on my YouTube channel, you, you can't find this stuff anywhere else. So I don't ask you guys for anything. You know, I put these videos out completely and solely for the sake of the love for you guys, for the love of the community, concern for the community, for concern for the Muslims, for the black community. That's why I make these videos. Nothing else. I don't ask anybody for anything. You know, it's as you can see, it's original material. It's material that's important. I've, I've interviewed Dr. Abdullah Baker. I've interviewed uh, the founder of Troy uh, and I've done many videos expo exposing uh, the Africa cult and many videos uh, pertaining to uh, the black community. So what I'm asking for you guys now, because I don't ask you guys for anything, right? But I'm asking you because that there's a lot of hard work and a lot of hours went into these videos. So I need you guys to support my channel. As soon as I get my YouTube back up again, I'll let you guys know. But you guys have to like, subscribe, share these videos. These, as you can see, these videos are very important. They are relevant to the community right now. <clears throat> and I need your support. So, because nobody else is going to support us. We have more than enough haters, right? It wasn't the first time somebody tried to sabotage my channel. Visual One tried it as well, right? So, <clears throat> uh, for me, in my mind, I can't even think of... Uh, going to another Muslim's channel and trying to shut it down. That does that thing, and most of us kind of think like that. But you got to understand, there are very malicious people out there that wear thobes and beards. That's what you got to understand, and they take advantage of your good manners in order to in order to um, push their own agendas. So that's why we make these videos so you guys can be hip to this game. It's no joke, man. This stuff is really real. So. Support my channel, support me on Patreon. I will get some crowdfunding going, inshallah, so that I can keep pushing these videos for you. And as soon as I get a YouTube again, I will let you guys know. You know, show me some love, <laughs> okay? All right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.